say when? Oh, when? All right. Hi guys. Um, my name is Andy Apes. I'm a senior software developer at Dell. Um, the noise maker in chief comment. If you want clarifications, ping me later. So, what this session is about, if the thing will actually advance. Sorry about that. Is basically around the deployment mechanism. Um, So one of the problems that, um, a, a little background. So I work on a product called Crowbar, the, the little crazy bunny at the bottom, uh, which is basically a deployment system for OpenStack. This, uh, there were a couple of sessions there, a few others that talk specifically about Crowbar. But for the purpose of, of what we're talking about here, um, it's basically a deployment system for uh, OpenStack and any other large distributed uh, environments. One of the thing that's always annoying is that the thing runs around here. Um, one of the problems with OpenStack is around testing a large distributed environment. It's, it's not sufficient to do a single node deployment and assume that it's actually going to work when you deploy it in a real multi-node bare metal environment. And we've seen quite a few bugs in OpenStack that were revealed only when folks actually went and deployed on a multi-node networked real honest to God environment as opposed to what DevStack kind of does where uh, you deploy everything on one stack and hope for the best. So what does it actually take to deploy, uh, to, to test OpenStack for real? And what is it that you want to achieve? Well, you want the deployment to be reproducible and predictable. You don't want every time you deploy it for it to be a little different. Uh, you want it to look like your production environment. You don't want it to be simulated. So for example, if you deploy Swift and you lose use loop devices and simulate the presence of multiple disks available, well, your deployment is not gonna behave the same in the test environment as it's gonna be on a real server with 20 disks. Um, you wanna be able to deploy the code you want to deploy. You don't wanna be dependent on, oh, there's a new maintenance release that just came out Friday and it all of a sudden has uh, new bits, new OpenStack bits that's happened. Last Friday, there was a new maintenance release for Essex, and if you are gonna go deploy a new system that go hits the internet, you're gonna get those bits instead of the bits you were expecting because, well, there's new better bits. Uh, so you wanna be able to control what it is that you actually wanna deploy in your environment, either for testing or for production. Um, one of the things about OpenStack that's actually kind of cool is that you can customize it. You can go create your own scheduler. You can go add your own drivers. Well, you wanna be able to deploy them in your test environment and make sure it works with whatever bits of OpenStack you deployed. So all those things are currently somewhat less than optimal in the testing and deployment solutions that are out there. So that's pretty much the drivers for this session. Um, so some of the problems is how many nodes are we deploying? Are you deploying on one or are you actually deploying a real Product, uh, production-like environment? Are you uh, deploying one static configuration or are you actually trying to, to modify the configuration? It keeps ruining my punchline. Um, it was, give me one second. Well, I will speak faster apparently because I need to speak faster. Um, are you actually, Config applying all the, the diverse configurations that OpenStack gives you and testing them, like you will actually be using them in production or are you just trying the one true and only um, default configuration that whatever deployment system you're using? Um, a, a quick question, how many folks actually deploy and operate OpenStack? Out of You've, have you ever hit problems of, I don't have the right dependency on the right Python module, right, packages, I'm missing this bit and everything comes crashing down in a fiery ball of hell. So have you ever tried to deploy in a new system that you've never deployed before OpenStack onto and well, your connectivity or the repo you were hitting didn't, write, didn't have the right dependencies and all of a sudden nothing works for you anymore and all your CI infrastructure is screaming bloody red. Um, these are some of the issues that basically this solution, what I'm 
gonna get to in a second, basically tries to, uh, to solve. And that does not include me being friends with PowerPoint, which was not very happy with me. So some of the other solutions, whoa, some of the other solutions that are out there, uh, there's obviously many deployment solutions for Crowbar. There are one of the po most popular one is DevStack Anvil or DevStack PY is another one and Juju is the other another one. Each one of them tries to, it, it's not a new problem. Every, everybody who's been deploying and testing OpenStack has hit these types of problems. Um, I won't go into detail into, one of the, into all of them. If you are interested, we can chat about them later. But basically there is still shortcomings and obviously my solution is the best. So we'll talk about it. So um, one of the first public uh, testing efforts for OpenStack was the canonical folks who've been doing a really good job around it again is running ahead of me. Uh, That's what happens when you put engineers to use PowerPoint. Um, sorry about that. Um, so the canonical guys have been doing a great job testing their packages. They basically go and get the latest code, they package it, they deploy it in the test environment, they test it, and they publish test packages. Uh, one of the question marks, which kind of ruined my thing, was do you really need to package? So if you deploy your own code, your own extensions to OpenStack, your own schedulers, your own patches because God for sake, occasionally there are some problematic um, areas in OpenStack, like attaching volumes once in a while. Um, do you really need to go through the whole cycle? Do you really need to publish packages just for you to be able to test that those customization and your deployment will work? Um, what would be cool is to actually skip that packaging. It would be cool for you to be able to say, here's my code put it in your canonical Git repository or wherever you use your production code, put all your configs that you're planning on using. I love PowerPoint. <laughs> Sorry about that. Get everything that you actually care about um, stage in your test or pre-prod production and see if it's gonna work. Right. What's missing from the previous uh, solutions or from the current uh, state of the world, it's not that easy to deploy multi-node. Each one of the solutions from the prior slides require you to go and tailor the nodes individually. If it's DevStack, you go need, to, need to go create local personality, local RC, basically go and configure the node, give it its own IP address, make sure it's the right, um, it ties to the right interfaces on that particular node. It's gonna keep ruining my pause. Thank you. Okay. Um, same goes with Anvil, same goes with Juju. There's a lot of manual tailoring that you need when you actually wanna go and deploy a multi-node environment. Um, same goes for multiple configs. If you wanna tweak the configuration, for example, switching the networking mode from by the HCP to VLAN, there's a lot of, oh, so now I need to make sure that um, the base operating system has the right networking configured on it. I now need to go and tailor the OpenStack config and make sure it actually is aware of what's configured on the node and make sure it ties in correctly. All the fun stuff that you have when you try to deploy any kind of more than single node OpenStack deployment. Um, and none of the current um, deployment solutions basically address to any real degree the concept of a custom, custom code that you can easily pull from your own repo. Um, it seems so simple when marketing guys do it. Okay. So what's pull from source all about? So starting from um, a production deployment system that is Crowbar that basically knows how to, um, I'll quickly recap, it knows how to take a system, configure its hardware, deploy the operating system on it, configure the base networking for the operating system and, and tie it into a management network, then deploy from packages the standard bits for OpenStack that you're interested in, 
customize the network based on the components on each node. So if it's a Swift node, it might need both a storage network and an admin network and potentially a public facing network if it's the if it's the proxy, the Swift proxy node. Or if it's Nova based on the networking mode you're using, it will need to create the appropriate networking. Do, do you need to create bridges so the VMs have something to connect to? Do you need to create appropriate VLANs? And so on. And then lay it down OpenStack and tie it into the various pieces. So that's, that's a starting point. What this feature, this uh, set of tweaks to uh, Crowbar achieve is basically let you do all that, but all without the packages. What's missing? Some of the things that, uh, from Crowbar, what, um, and how does it tie into the ecosystem of, of OpenStack? So, uh, by the way, feel free to interrupt me or stop if what I'm uh, talking about makes no sense. Um, one of the things that packages do for you and do it very well is manage dependencies. Nothing lives alone, especially not in the world of, of open source. And at last count, when I counted packages and Python modules, there were about a couple hundreds that a given Nova um, node will actually need to pull down and install in order for Nova to actually work. Um, what do you do if all you got is the source? Uh, let me see. So one of the things um, that DevStack, which uh, gates trunk, meaning tests every bit that goes into OpenStack, does very nicely, is maintain a list of what prerequisite packages are required, at least for a couple of distributions, not for all, not for the, all the OpenStack um, Linux distributions. The other thing um, that's required is what other Python modules do you need on the system? If we want to use uh, crowbar or any other system to be able to get to a point where we can uh, trunk, uh, sorry, gate trunk on it, on tests run using this deploying system, we don't want developers to have to go and update things in multiple places, right? If you need to pull in a new dependency, you don't want to have to go and modify things in um, your deployment environment. You want to be able to just touch the source code. Well, so, in OpenStack currently, every project maintains its uh, pip requires. Does, do people know what I talk about? I know you guys do. Show of hands. Mm, kind of, okay, maybe. Um, so pip requires is basically a, the set of Python modules that are deployed on a node when, uh, before Nova is deployed and before, and before you go and run the unit tests on the code to make sure it, run, it works. So if any dependencies are broken, if something, if a version, if you need to update a version of a module that you depend on and it hasn't been updated, that change, that commit, that change to OpenStack is not gonna be accepted because tests are gonna fail until you go and fix the list of dependencies in the project. And at that point, you will, that's basically the source of truth around what either Python modules, this particular module requires. Um, okay, I should have prefaced this and say this was meant for a slightly more developer-oriented crowd. Um, other things that uh, you might want to affect on your testing environment are how do you want Nova to be configured? It's extremely flexible. How do you manage the configuration for a multi-node deployment in a sane way? In the Crowbar environment, you basically have a, a nice GUI that you can play with, but everything you can do in the GUI, you can actually describe in a simple JSON file that you can manage via your favorite CLIs and you can check in into source control. So you have a prescribed set of configurations that you can step through and vary as you want so you can make sure that it doesn't work in just one environment, but it works for everything. Um, I'm gonna skip the, the rest of the things because they're probably not that interesting. So what's the process? You take all the bits we, we talked about. Right, you take um, the requirements, the list of requirements you have, you take the open source bits, uh, the open stack bits, you basically go and package them into 
a self-contained archive. Again, this is the crowbar approach that gives you the reproducibility and predictability. Nothing depends on things from the outside world unless you choose to. So you have the option of basically archiving everything. You install the admin node that basically serves as the controller for the, your environment to test the production. And it basically has uh, a Git server based on it, it well, server. It has a PYPI repository mirror that you can basically get every, all the dependencies, Python dependencies from. And it has uh, an app repo on it that again, basically gets, lets you install the environment from a known, tested to be good, um, self-consistent set of bits without having to go to the, to the webs if you don't want to. Um, again, this is engineers doing builds. Okay, no, trying to make builds work. So, so you first deploy the admin node then you get that running and at that point you can deploy any number of nodes. Um, so to show you that it's not just um, vain words, it's actually, that's the wrong window. Excuse the windows. Um, so realizing how good uh, OpenStack conferences, have, what a good reputation OpenStack conferences have around Wi-Fi accessibility, I'm not gonna try to build uh, do a build right now, because it downloads about 200 megs of stuff. Uh, rather, this is a build I ran um, two days ago, Friday. Um, so w one of the um, challenges um, often is to figure out what do you need, where do you get the information of what you need, and how do you package it in an environment that you can then use for your testing? Um, so the log file that we're looking here is basically, um, let me start with a little earlier. This is extremely verbose, by the way. This was so you'd believe that, and if you are a sh uh, shell enthusiast, um, you're welcome to read it. Be nice if I could see when I'm typing. Um, start with that. So basically, this is. Oh, I should mention that Artem here actually was very uh, contributed a bunch of the code, most of the code, to basically figuring out dependencies and bringing things down. Um, so this. Um, this is basically a log file of building the ISO that will contain all your dependencies and will basically used, be used to install your environment. Um, the bunch we're on the screen right now is basically going and fetching the, depend the distribution based dependencies. Not everything is open source. You don't want necessarily to build everything from scratch. So we still rely on packaged bits for things that are outside of OpenStack. Uh, things like Python uh, setup tools and random, a large collection of bits. How large? Um, there you go. Zero. <laughs> So what's crawled about 3,000 random odd packages. Um, the other part, and again, I'm, I think I'm going into details that is probably not very interesting to the audience. So the last part that I will show you is that you can basically um, go commit a change to your Git server or to your whatever, update your code, pull in the latest bits from production, go into your, um, go to your, into your test de deployment and say basically deploy again from scratch using my latest and greatest bits and end up with a working deployed environment. That's 
basically um, that's basically the holy grail. We can have a very short uh, test code deploy test cycle where you don't have to worry about any externalities that you don't want to choose to care about. Um, let me pause here and see if there are questions or So I don't know if, if you're familiar with Crowbar at all. I didn't want to go make this session about Crowbar because the intent was to keep it a lot more. Um, so if I want to deploy a Nova environment, ignoring for a second all the other, other pre prerequisites that Nova requires, Nova requires a database, a keystone, maybe you want to install a dashboard. But basically the way Crowbar manages this all is by managing proposals where you basically say, here are my nodes uh, and here's the role that I want them to play in the, in the cluster that I'm deploying. So for Nova, you would need a controller, you'd need uh, a few computes and potentially you want to install a Nova volume. The way you'd manage it in, um, In a test environment, or when, if you're a CLI type of a person, you uh, say, for example, I don't know if the, is the text visible? Sorry. So you know it's live because it's obviously barfing left, right, and center. So I'll skip the CLI for too many things, but ba basically, you'd basically get a JSON file that lists all the parameters that you want. This basically lists the default one. Um, Right, so the same assignment of here are my nodes. One of the things that you'd notice, I didn't have to change anything. Currently in, in this Crowbar deployment, I basically have three nodes. If I, um, with two commands, create me a default proposal and apply it, I can basically kick off a deployment of Nova on these three, VM, these happen to be VMs on my laptop, but those could very easily be uh, physical servers. So it's very easy to script the, the, the workflow would be where you'd create um, either do what I just did where you create the default and then apply it or you can have a few pre-canned configs with the various parameters that you'd want to customize for your environment. Things like networking mode. Um, does, that, does that make? Mm -hmm. I'll just use the GUI. It's easier to look at. Okay, so so basically Crowbar manages the life cycle of nodes. Nodes will boot up DHCP and sit and boot into a live image where they basically sit and wait to be told what to do. And Crowbar basically orchestrates deployments on those nodes by uh, triggering currently only chef executions on those nodes when something needs to happen on them. So once you put up the node, it will sit there until uh, you commit a proposal that gives that machine a personality or a purpose to, be, to do more than just wait there. Once that happens, it will, uh, Crowbar will basically lay down the operating system by either kickstarting the seed, depending if it's Red Hat or Ubuntu. And once it uh, boots up again and calls into Crowbar and says, hey, I'm here, I'm ready, what do you want me to do? Crowbar will configure Chef for that node and trigger a chef client execution on that node, tying the different nodes together 
and tying into the specifics of the network. So um, it probably will assign it an IP address, make sure it's on the right subnets. If there are VLANs or bonding or any kind of networking configuration that needs to occur, it will be performed before you try to bring up the, the OpenStack component that you're deploying on that node. And so if you need to deploy multiple proposals, right, like multiple components, so if we look for a second at the various components of OpenStack that you need to, to have a functional cluster, you need to deploy MySQL, because again, you're trying to test what you'll test in production. You don't want to run against SQLite, you want to run against a real database server. <coughs> Sorry. You'd want to deploy Keystone, you'd want potentially to deploy Swift if you're, that's part of your environment, or just Glance. You can basically queue up all those things and tell Crowbar, here's what I want. And as um, components come online, Crowbar is aware of the dependencies between them. So for example, if I want to deploy um, Nova, I, I can either choose one of the, uh, the default of what my SQL cluster I want to uh, operate against, what Keystone instance do I want to operate, what Glance cluster I want to operate on, gets pre-populated assuming they were already created. So as you, if it's not, it says, ooh, I got nothing. And it will wait until one becomes available. So basically there's, in many scenarios, you have this like chicken and egg uh, polling, how do I know things are already ready? Crowbar basically orchestrates that deployment, make sure that things get deployed when they're ready. Sorry, you'd have to speak up a bit. Do you mean security associations? Uh, the question is around IPsec security associations? So at this point, we basically make sure that authorized SSH authorized keys are available and we, um, but we don't, we don't deal with IPsec. We haven't heard customers actually asking for it. Um, do you have other specific mechanisms you're thinking about other than SSH? Okay. Yeah, so basically Crow will ensure that there's a secure key generated for the root user and it dis it's distributed to the nodes so you can actually, and installed as an authorized key, so you can actually communicate between all the nodes. Uh, sure, we actually, um, so Crowbar can deploy Swift. It's actually one of my, I have a warm spot in my heart for Swift because I wrote that. Um, any, any particular questions or? Um, so I don't want to dwell too much into Swift and I don't know if it's a little out of the scope of here. Uh, one of the challenges with Swift is that it actually, it's very smart about disks you want to be able, in order to test Swift, you need to have enough devices to make um, available to Swift so it can create replicas or multi-devices on multiple nodes. Otherwise, the whole purpose of Swift is kind of defeated. Um, in a testing environment, especially, uh, the, the way DevStack is set up currently to test Swift is by creating loop devices or basically taking files and pretending there are disks and making Swift work against them. It causes, uh, let's say like this, you don't want to run performance tests on that type of setup because um, you kind of defeat the whole purpose of having many disks and many spindles available and getting much better performance. You'd want to be able to deploy in real environment with taking advantage of all the disks you have in your environment to get realistic performance numbers. So th yes, that's actually one of the things we've, we've targeting Crowbar to do is basically be able to do real performance testing on actual hardware with lots and lots of spindles on the same server. Sorry, there's a light right, right above you, so I didn't see you there. So. So you're asking a few questions. Let me see if I captured them. So the first question was, is it a particular uh, bar clamp or not? Or, and how does it relate to the shit cookbooks? 
so there is a new bar clamp that basically will deploy Git in a server configuration. There's no real Git server, so basically uh, you can denote one of the nodes on, in the cloud environment to be your Git repository that all the other nodes pull from. Um, so there is one new bar clamp. Um, to deploy from source, basically all the other bar clamps were modified to uh, pull from that, f to find that Git repo in the environment, pull from it the source and deploy it locally on the node. So, and that basically is modification of the chef, chef cookbooks that were already in the other bar clamps. Does that answer your question? Okay. Um, any other questions? So apparently I thought this is all on GitHub already, uh, but apparently it was a little glitch. This will very soon be on GitHub. <laughs> the code is, but there was some branching structure issue, so I won't, uh, I won't dwell on that. Um, I think that's, if there are no other questions, um, this slides with uh, up-to-date links to where the information is available will actually be uploaded to the slide share for the conference. And you're more than welcome to play with it. Would love to hear feedback. Um, that said, I've been told that I need to say that we're hiring. So if you're developers, product managers, or interested in OpenStack, uh, stop by the Dell booth and people would love to talk to you. Um, that's about it. Thank you much. <laughs>